Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our series series, so we're going to be talking about a geometric series. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Here we have what a geometric series looks like. So notice, this is the first thing, that k starts at 0. Our index always has to start at 0, not at 1, not at 2, not at 3, has to start at 0. Goes up to infinity. And then we have a, which is going to be our first term, multiplied by r, which that represents the common ratio. It's what it's being multiplied by every time and then to the power of k, right? So let's go ahead and see an example of this. We have 0 0.9 plus 0 0.09 all the way down. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out that first term. So we have 0 0.9 and I'm left with 1 plus and that's going to be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.0. Nope, not that many zeros yet. Plus 0 0.001 plus all the way down. Let's go ahead and represent these with fractions. That might be a little nicer. So 0 0.9 times 1 plus 1 tenth plus 1 over 100, 1 over 1,000, and then so on. So notice in the denominator, all of these are powers of 10. So 0 0.9, we can represent 1 as 1 divided by 10 to the power of 0, right? 10 to the power of 0 is 1, 1 divided by 1 is 1, plus 1 over 10 to the power of 1, plus 1 over 10 to the power of 2, and then 1 over 10 to the power of 3. So notice how we can represent this with an explicit formula, right? We have that in the denominator, the k is going to be the exponent. Another way you can think about it is that the common ratio to get from 1 over 10 to the power of 0 to 1 over 10 is you multiply by 1 over 10. And then to get to 10 to the power 1 to 10 to the power 2, you multiply again by 1 over 10. So from here, we can go ahead and write this out. So we have the summation, k going from 0 to infinity. And that's going to be 0 0.9 multiplied by 1 over 10 to the power of k. Another way you can write this is we have the summation k going from 0 to infinity of 0 0.9 times 1 over 10 to the power of k, however you want to write it. So let's talk about how do we know if this is going to converge or diverge. So first what we have is the limit as k goes to infinity of r to the k. If the common ratio gets really, really big, we're just going to be adding big number and if it diverges. If the common ratio gets really, really small at some point when the exponent is big enough, then maybe it's going to converge. So first, when we have the common ratio is strictly less than 1, and that's going to be an absolute value, so it could be positive or negative, we know that that's going to go to 0. So let's take an example here. Let's say we have 1 over 2 to the power of k. As k goes to infinity, 1 over 2 to the power of k, the denominator gets really, really big, right? and 1 divided by a big number, that's just going to go to 0. This could also be negative, so pretend there's a little negative in there. It doesn't matter, the denominator is going to get really, really big. Even if it's oscillating between positive and negative, on either side of the oscillations, it's going to go to 0, right? So that's what happens when the common ratio is strictly less than 1. And then we have when the common ratio is equal to 1. Naturally, 1 to the k is going to go to 1, 1 times 1, whatever it's 1. And then we also have if r is less than or equal to negative 1, or when r is greater than 1. It, the limit's not going to exist. So let's go ahead and take 2 to the power of k. So as k goes to infinity, 2 to the power of k also is going to diverge to infinity, right? If it's equal to negative 1 to the k, that's going to be negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1. That's going to oscillate forever, so it's also diverging, right? If it's negative 2 to the power of k, that's also diverging. It's diverging to positive infinity when the power is even and negative infinity when the power is odd. So in our case, we have that the common ratio is equal to 1 over 10, which is less than 1, which tells us it's going to converge. Now in our case, we're going to actually take the limit to show that. So that is equal to the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 over 10 to the power of k, which is going to be 1 over a really big number as k goes to infinity, which is going to go to 0. So if the series converges, we actually are able to know what it converges to. So we have that the series converges to, and that's going to be a, the first term, divided by 1 minus r, the common ratio. So proof, we're going to show how this actually works, how we get to that value. And we're going to first take a partial sum. So I'm going to say sn, that's going to be my partial sum, is going to be equal to, and first we have a times r to the power of 0, which I can just rewrite that as a, right? plus a times r to the power of 1, plus a times r squared, a times r cubed. I'm going to go all the way down to my nth term, but notice that's actually going to be n minus 1. And that's because the summation starts at 0. So the nth term is going to be actually 1 less than n, right? Because we're not starting at 1. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is multiply this entire equation by r. 
So I get r times s to the n is equal to, and that becomes a to the r, a to the r squared, a to the r cubed, a r to the power of 4, and that's going to go all the way down. And now we just get that nice to the n. We're going to do something tricky right here. We're actually going to go ahead and subtract. So we're going to take the entire equation of Sn and subtract off the entire equation of R of Sn. So here's the equation of Sn. We're going to go ahead and subtract off this thing. And notice here what cancels. So we have this A to the R is going to cancel here. All of these terms in between are going to cancel off. And then this A to the R n minus 1 is going to cancel with the term right here. And so notice what we're left with. Sn minus Rsn is equal to, we have that remaining a term right here, and then we have this remaining term. But don't forget, we're subtracting it, so it's going to be minus a r to the power of n. Let's go ahead and factor out some common terms. I'm going to factor out Sn, and that's going to be 1 minus r is equal to, we can factor out a here, 1 minus r to the n, and I want to get Sn all by itself, right? So I'm going to get Sn is equal to a times 1 minus r to the n, divided by 1 minus r. So remember, this is the partial sum, k going from 0 to n minus 1, of a times r to the power of k is equal to this little formula we found right here. So what I want, though, I don't want to just end at n minus 1. I want the entire summation. And so what I'm going to do is take the limit as n goes to infinity of both sides. Alrighty, so on this left side, now we get our actual series. So k going from 0 to infinity, right, as n goes to infinity, that goes to infinity. a times r to the power of k is equal to, and notice here on this left side, the only thing that has an n is this right here. So we can just move to the limit right there. So this is going to be a times 1 minus the limit as n goes to infinity of r to the n, divided by that nice little 1 minus r. Now we're going to break this up into cases because r can be different values, right? So the first case is when r is strictly less than 1, absolute value of that. So here what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of r to the power of n divided by 1 minus r. And let's go ahead and think about what this limit right here is going to do. If r is strictly less than 1, this right here is going to approach a value of 0, right? 1 half to the power of n as n goes to infinity, that gets really tiny, it's going to go to 0. So this is going to be equal to a times 1 minus 0 divided by 1 minus r, which that's just equal to a over 1 minus r. So when it converges, it's going to converge to that value. Now let's take another case, and this is going to be when it's strictly greater than. So think about it. Again, we're going to do the limit. And in our last example, right, I said 2 to the power n. So as n goes to infinity, 2 to the power of n is just it's going to get huge. So this term right here is just going to diverge to infinity. So this tells us the series will diverge, right? It's just going to get really, really big. So now a third case that we have here is when r is actually equal to 1. And let's just think about that as a generic series. So k equals 0 to infinity, a times, and that's going to be 1 to the power of k. Well, that's just the summation from k equals 0 to infinity of a, which is equal to a plus a plus a plus a. So on and so forth, forever. We're just forever adding a. That is never going to converge to a value. If you're just forever adding on a value, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. So this will diverge. And depending on if it's positive or negative, so if it's a positive value, obviously you're just adding numbers, so it'll diverge to um, infinity. If it's a negative value, it's going to diverge to negative infinity. So either of those, it's going to grow infinite. So here we have the fourth case, and that's when r is equal to negative 1. So let's go ahead and think about that as a normal generic series. So here we got a times negative 1 to the k. So let's go ahead and plug in k values. First we have k is equal to 0, so we get positive a, minus a, plus a, minus a, plus a, minus a, and, you know, that goes on forever. So this is something I commonly see with students is they're thinking, oh, this is going to go to 0 because this is equal to 0, this is equal to 0, this is equal to 0. So they think it converges to 0. But that is actually not the case. Think of it a little differently. First, we have a. And now we subtract a, so now we have 0. But then I'm adding a again, so now I'm at a. But I'm subtracting a again, so now I'm at 0. This is actually going to oscillate between whatever a is and 0. It's going to continually jump up and down. It's not going to converge to 0. It's going to oscillate. So this will diverge. So the only time it will actually converge is when the common ratio absolute value is less than 1. If it's equal to 1, equal to negative 1, greater than 1, then it will just diverge. 
So let's go ahead and talk about R. So we said since 1 over 10 is less than 1, then we know the series will converge, and we can now find what it converges to. So it converges to A over 1 minus R. So that's going to be 0 0.9 divided by 1 minus 0 0.1, or 1 tenth. That's going to be 0 0.9 divided by 0 0.9, which is equal to 1. So this actually makes sense. Let's just think about it real quick. 0 0.9 plus 0 0.09, and then 0 0.009, and I'm going to you know stop right there. That's equal to 0 0.999 going on forever, which, you know, is equal to 1. So, yeah. So let's do some more examples. This one's nice. So we have the summation k going from 0 to infinity of 2 to the power of k. So what we would say is that this is a geometric series with a common ratio. So you can say r is equal to 2. Since r is greater than 1, this series will diverge. Here's another one. It's not going to always be straightforward. Sometimes you're going to have to like work with it a little bit. So this one I would rewrite. We have k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over e to the power of k, which you could go ahead and rewrite as k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over e to the power of k. So this tells us that a is equal to 1, e, not e, r is equal to 1 over e. It's good to know what e is equal to. e is approximately equal to 2.71. So 1 divided by that is going to be less than 1. So this is a geometric series, blah, blah, blah. We have r is equal to 1 over e. So since, since the common ratio is less than 1, the series will converge. We can find what it converges to using this little formula. We have a, which is 1 over 1 minus 1 over e. You could leave it at that, or you can multiply the whole thing by e. You get e over e minus 1. Use a calculator. That's going to be some number. But that right there it shows what it converges to. So let's try another one. Again, we're going to have to manipulate this one a little bit. Notice the first thing that I notice is that this starts at 3. So there's multiple ways you can start it. There's not like one direct solution. The first thing you can do is maybe try to combine some values. So k equals 3 to infinity. We have that 3, which is just hanging out. But notice we have 4 over 7, both to the power of k. So I can combine that into one fraction. The next thing you can do, or you could do this in the reverse order, it literally doesn't matter, is I need to subtract 3 from k from our index, which means in our little formula here, I need to add 3. So I'm going to get k plus 3, and then I'm going to go ahead and use exponent rules to try to simplify this, because in order to evaluate it with the geometric series rules, you need to have it start at 0, and you need to have the common ratio to the power of k, not k plus 3. So that's going to be 3 times 4 over 7 to the power of k multiplied by 4 over 7 to the power of 3. So let's go ahead and do some algebra here real quick to figure out what our starting value is. So that's going to be 3 times 4 to the power of 3 is 64. Divided by 7 to the power of 3 is 343. 4 over 7 to the power of k. Let's see, I'm going to whip out my old-fashioned math. 12, 1, 19, 192. So that's going to be our numerator, 192. And now we know what our starting value is. We know what our common ratio is, and our um, index is starting at 0. So now we can apply the test. So this is a geometric series. I'm not going to write that out right now. So we have r is equal to 4 over 7, which is less than 1. So this series will converge. Let's find what it converges to. So we have a over 1 minus r. That's equal to 192 divided by 343 divided by 1 minus 4 over 7. We can go ahead and simplify the denominator. That is going to get us um, 3 over 7. So if you rewrote this, 192, 343, we're going to multiply it by 7 over 3, multiplying by the reciprocal. I know this divides out. That's going to be 49. I know this 3 divides out, and that's going to be equal to 64. And so it, this converges to 64 over 49. So that is all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.